All right, so we've completed our annual shootout of digital fabrication 3D printer machines. And this machine, the Race 3D N2, is uh, one of our top machines this year. Tied for first place. And, um, well, just getting into it, there's no getting around. This thing is big. It's big. It's very big. It has a bigger brother, too, the N2 Plus, which we tested last year. But, uh, yeah, it's a big machine. So just from the top, what are some of the things that made this one of the top machines, one of the one of those machines that tied for first place in this shootout? Well, obviously the print quality, that's the big thing that we test. That's the big thing that we look at is how, how well does the printer perform? And it performed fantastically this year. Uh, the, the N2 Plus did well last year. They continued updating software and the N2 did just a, a great job this year. Uh, it has a lot of really great features that we like, um, you know, obviously fully enclosed, which, you know, really helps with print performance. Uh, they use really high-end uh, ball screws for their Z-axis, so you have a nice, smooth Z travel, making sure that there's no wobble. They just really built this thing well. Yeah. Uh, so let's kind of go down the numbers of the machine. Um, it is a bit of an expensive machine. It's, what, about $3,000? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty close. Um, it uses 1.75 millimeter filament, um, and it has a dual dual extruder here. Which is great, and we have a lot of duals this year. This year, multi-extrusion is really catching on, we think. Yeah, and as far as the hot ends, uh, what kind of temperatures and filaments uh, can you use with this printer? So it's totally open filament, so you can use whatever you want. We do have it loaded up with the N2's filament right now. One thing to keep an eye out on is when you are putting your filament in or your spools, um, because it keeps the spools inside, if your spools are a little too wide, it gets hard to shut the door. Uh, so watch how thick your, your spools are, but you can always operate it with the door open. Uh, and of course, with the overall uh, large size of the machine, you do get a pretty sizable uh, build envelope. Uh, the numbers are around 300 millimeters, which if you're imperial measurements, it's about uh, a cubic foot uh, of, of build envelope. And of course, as far as printing interface, you do have this really nice touch screen interface. It might take a little bit of getting used to to find where all the filament loading, unloading controls and things like that are, but what are some of the other options that this thing presents? Well, the touch screen interface is really something that sets this machine apart from a lot of the others. Not only, you know, obviously is it a tablet, gives you the touch screen, but it allows you to connect to the machine in pretty much any way you would want to, to be able to print. It has internal storage that you can upload to via Wi-Fi or via USB. You also can print from USB stick. It takes an SD card. So no matter how you like to print, you can, you can add on to this machine. Another kind of nifty thing is because it has Wi-Fi built in, it has the what's essentially an Android tablet under the hood, you can hook up a USB webcam to it also and have a camera on your machine. Great, so you get that you know, kind of offsite uh, printer monitoring yep. you know, if you don't want to be in the room with it to check on your machine. Right, and when you've got a foot cube build area, you've got long prints, so being able to monitor them not sitting on top of the machine all the time is, is pretty nice. Now the machine is not perfect. Um, I, there, it does have some interesting and finicky elements of the way you level the bed and, um, well, it is surprising to see with as refined as this machine is, it's still using things like binder clips to hold the build plate in place. Yeah, we would love to see some actual clips on there that were custom designed for the machine, take up a little bit less space so you don't have to worry about running the extruder into them or anything like that. Uh, and it would be nice if there were a, was an easier way to level out the build platform. They say it comes factory pre-leveled, um, I've never talked to anyone that owns one of these, and I actually know a decent number of people that do, that theirs came fully leveled out. But once you get that trammed in correctly, it, it stays, it's pretty rock solid. Yeah, so uh, what's the software tool chain for this printer look like? So while this printer uses G-code, so you could use another slicer to be able to use it, Raise3D does have their own proprietary slicer for doing it, which is really great, and again, Slicers go and print profiles go just as importantly hand-to-hand -hand as the mechanics of the machine of how our scores turn out. So the, the work that Raise3D has done in their slicer really does help this thing perform the way it does. And that software comes with extra features that work over the Wi-Fi, being able to upload your models over Wi-Fi, being able to monitor the, the print status uh, and control a lot of things that you would normally control on the touchscreen, but being able to just do them from your computer over Wi-Fi is, is pretty nice. 
So obviously if you're going to be using the Wraith 3DN2, you're going to need to commit a pretty sizable area of your workspace to it, but you are going to get some really, really exceptional prints out of this machine. Yeah, really, if you have the budget and you have the space, it's really hard to go wrong with these machines. Um, I'm still using the N2 Plus, which gives another foot taller to this machine. I use it as one of my standard workhorses because it just keeps printing and printing and printing, giving me great results. The enclosure really helps make a lot of problems, uh, environmental problems, not be an issue anymore. Um, yeah, if, if you have the space and you have the money, it's, it's really a hard machine to beat.